Hello, I'm Mary V. Today, let's talk about what to do if you are squeezing between your shoulder and your jaw when you're holding your violin and you're experiencing pain. So when we use a shoulder rest, sometimes we get locked in a particular position and that position doesn't change between our head and our shoulder and it's so natural for the shoulder to squeeze um, simply because the shoulder rest is there. Another reason that we squeeze is because of uh, shifting. When we shift down, downwards to stop the violin coming away from us, we tend to squeeze. And when we're not shifting, the squeeze doesn't go away, the squeeze becomes permanent. And many of us find that we can't play without squeezing. So what we've got to do is uh, experience uh, what it's like to play without squeezing. And rather than uh, change the shoulder, which is a very difficult thing to do, uh, instead we simply free our head and we play, say, a simple note. And we free our head. Take your head right away from the chin rest. Now you'll see there's no opportunity for the, for the shoulder to squeeze but the mechanism and the impulse to do it is still there even though the top part of the squeeze, the, the chin, the jaw, is disengaged. The shoulder may still come up like this. So at least we can become aware of what the shoulder is doing uh, automatically. Uh, when we disengage our head. So that's the first step. Let's disengage our head. And that tells us a lot. That tells us what our shoulder is actually doing, even when we're just playing a static note. The shoulder and the chin are doing things that they don't need to be doing. So we need to get awareness first. Uh, the next thing is, uh, without the head, is to start moving the violin around a lot more than most people experience when they play a uh, with a shoulder rest. The whole position of the shoulder and the jaw are sort of locked in place. But with the head disengaged, uh, simply on a static note, we'll think about the bowing. And on a down bow, we'll open out like this on an up bow will close like that. Okay, so this is the next stage. So without the head being engaged, play your note again and do a down bow and open out. So that's the second stage of starting to move the violin around a little bit within the, um, within the confines of where the shoulder rest is placed on the violin. I've got mine like this, slightly angle, that's the way that I have mine. Yours might be straight across or a different kind of shoulder rest. No matter what, when it goes on the shoulder, it should go in the inside part of the shoulder, not the top of the shoulder, because that really does immobilize your hand and it leads to quite a lot of technical problems. Um, so put it in the sort of hollow there. So back to movement, let's get a little bit more movement. Okay, so without the bow, we'll hold the violin and keep the head disengaged. And by this time, you should be, even though simple exercises, you should be a little bit more aware of what your shoulder is actually doing. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, something that people who play without a shoulder rest do. And this is the, the thing that we need to learn to do as well, even if you use a shoulder rest.
and it's uh, allowing the thumb and the hand to support the violin during shifts. So during shifts, when you're in first position, your thumb is at the side, and when you move up, it's underneath. It's in uh, underneath the little curve bit here. It's called the saddle, and the thumb goes underneath and then it goes to the side. And the difficulty without a shoulder rest is that when you come uh, to the from the underneath position to the side position without a shoulder rest, either your head is holding the violin or the violin, it feels as if it's going to shoot out because there's nothing holding it except your head and possibly your shoulder. That's the feeling that you can overcome technically if you don't use a shoulder rest, but it's something that people that use a shoulder rest need to learn as well. Okay, because it's kind of a basic um, violin left hand uh, bit of knowledge that will free you a lot of the time from having to use this part to hold the violin. So, the difficulty is the transition between the top part coming down and going to the side and the little part of the hand here is what starts coming into play. So a little V is made between this part of the hand and the thumb. So that you use this part of the hand to help you go down and make that transition between the top, the top position of the thumb and the side position of the thumb without pulling the violin away from you. So try, just hold the violin slightly, don't, don't grip it, just hold it very lightly and try and disengage your head as much as you can. Go up and then go down and you'll see when the hand is at the top, this part of the hand is away from the violin and then when it comes down, it's touching and it's making a little support for the uh, for the violin. The other thing is that when you're going down, you're shifting down. Don't think of it as down. When you're playing without a shoulder rest or during this exercise, uh, think of it as going up. Look at the scroll, and you'll see that actually that movement slightly up is what stops the violin from shooting out. Now I know that these exercises are very uncomfortable for people who are used to holding the violin with the shoulder and the head and they feel that they're going to drop the violin. But if you, if you disengage your head and you practice using your hand and your thumb you'll see that the violin moves around a lot more. And that's normal when you don't use a shoulder rest. And it should start to become normal when you do use a shoulder rest. And by disengaging your head when you can, you can disengage your shoulder because the shoulder has nothing to squeeze against. So how do you do it? Start with static notes, say in, in one position. Right, disengage your head and start playing. Just play anything just in one position. Okay, so that's all possible. You don't need your head and your shoulder squeezing for that, do you? You're just in a static position. And shift up. So that's quite a big chunk of that phrase that you don't need your head to be squeezing through the violin into the shoulder at all. And the concept of identifying in your piece where you can release your head is the key to this. Because rather than trying to get your shoulder to stop squeezing up, it's easier and more sensible to just lift your head and have a knowledge of a uh, technique of how to shift now, it's natural that when you're playing a faster piece that there's going to be a lot of shifting. But the issue is 
that even if you're squeezing in order to shift, it's learning how to let that squeeze go when you're in static positions. That's the secret of it and that's the key to it. And it seems like an unnatural thing to st start learning to move the violin around a lot more. But in fact, what I'm really doing is a further uh, allowing a technique to be into play and also to uh, release my head when I can. So it becomes second nature if I'm playing something a long note or I'm shifting up the way. I'm always moving my head. I'm always moving my head. I'm allowing my um, hand to be holding the instrument. If I've got a, a, a big shift um, full of notes and everything, I might use my head to, to hold. But what's become second nature is that I, if I hold the violin just to steady it and everything, now it's second nature to let the squeeze go again. And that's the difficulty, is squeezing and then holding the squeeze. You don't even know you're doing it. So uh, the reason this is so very important is that it's very, very important technically uh, not to immobilise this shoulder, not to play with the shoulder and the, the chin, squeezing the violin because it makes a difference to the sound of the violin, but it absolutely affects all the muscles going down the arm and eventually it can really hamper uh, your agility and your dexterity. So it, it is very, very important not to play with pain, but there is a way out by practicing a little bit of movement and learning how to use the thumb and the hand to get up and down the violin like at someone who doesn't use a shoulder rest will give you so much freedom from the tyranny of the locked position. Only one position and locked. And even if you're playing something in just one position, you're squeezing. So I hope that this will help you because I think it's very widespread. It's a problem with shoulder rests and a lot of people say, well, you know, there's so much pain, there's so much difficulty here, don't use a shoulder rest. But you don't need to, you just need to know the technique of how to free your head, how to use your hand to start doing shifting and to allow the violin to move around a little bit more than you're used to. Okay, just very simple things. Start to allow that the violin to move and go through your piece, a piece that you're playing and start to identify work you can practice lifting your head if you do squeeze, practice letting go again by, don't bother about the shoulder, take the head away and then the, the shoulder has nothing to squeeze against. So, good luck with uh, releasing yourself from pain and discomfort, okay? <laughs> so I'll say bye-bye for now and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.